Welcome back to another episode of The Creative Herd. On this one, I got to sit down with a tattoo artist who has carved quite the career path out for herself in a pretty short amount of time. In the episode, we talk about pretty much exactly that, like how to make waves in a short term, um, which Sasha explained that there's really no secret behind it. Just not have a plan B, go 100% all into what you're doing and make sure that you love it. Uh, there's a lot in this episode and I really hope you enjoy it. Let's just get into it. Before each episode, I usually like try to give like a little background of like who the person is and just like kind of sum up the yep. episode of like basically get the viewer ready. But if you had to give your own backstory on like who you are, what would you summarize yourself as? That's a really, really difficult question. I feel like that's like starting off from the most difficult question. Um, I guess I'm a creator, but I guess that's probably what most people say create things i'm a creator i'm a doer well at the at the core you're like what are you doing right now what am i doing right now yeah other than sitting right here <laughs> i was gonna give you a smart ass answer <laughs> for that um just kind of trying to put my name out there and to do something that's gonna have a lasting impact in my industry and hopefully maybe beyond that how long have you been um in your industry right now two years almost two years it'll be two years in april which is i feel like a baby for saying that's that. fairly <laughs> short right yeah but like i don't think where you are in your career somebody would classify that as like um infancy no it's it's weird i feel like everything just happened really really fast like everybody that i'm uh that i associate with in the tattoo industry they've all been at it for like five years ten years fifty like the guy that i work with has been in it for like 15 years I'm just a little tadpole (laughs) swimming around, but yeah, I feel like it really happened kind of fast. Do you think that had something to do with like, um, your willingness and like your drive to just be like full force? I don't give a shit about anything. Like you literally put blinders on from the outside looking in. This is like my perspective that like, it's somebody that like cut out everything else and was just like, I'm going to put like all my time and effort into doing this one thing until like. I get there. That's actually exactly what happened. Because right before I started tattooing, I was serving. So I was just working in the bar industry for years. I started when I was 18. And then two years ago, I would have been 24. So when I was 24 years old, I was serving. I had just moved back to Toronto and I was living on my own. And I decided that I was going to get into tattooing. And then I was like, (laughs) okay. I was like, I'm going to Costa Rica on this like two week trip. And immediately after that, I'm quitting my job. I'm going to start an apprenticeship right away i'm not going to be like drinking partying and stuff anymore your job to yeah to apprentice for free (laughs) yeah it was the most probably the most like mortifying part of my life it was very very stressful looking back do you think you would do the exact same thing again 100 percent. yeah i don't think you can give as much into something if you're just one foot in and one foot out because if you're being careful you know that there's something to fall back on whereas if you just like really dive in it's like fuck this like there I can't fail yeah I don't have a plan B no there's no plan B that's how I do everything (laughs) (laughs) like just full in just full in it's pretty extreme I guess you have to be a certain personality type to actually do that yeah um but you have a backstory of like before when you were serving and stuff were you actually like drawing and like getting your hand and selling prints and doing all that jazz my first memories that I can remember as a child were just drawing like my mom would buy me graphing paper because white paper was too expensive (laughs) and I would just draw on both sides and I would just like draw stories almost like comics and then it evolved into paintings and then um when I lived in Alberta for five years I was kind of in a lull I wasn't really doing anything and towards the end of that I was like you know what it's time to wake up started to paint again and then I started selling prints of things started selling original paintings and I was like wow maybe I could actually do something with this that's nuts so you had a kind of a little bit of a different upbringing then yes (laughs) not using regular white paper and stuff that's cool no yeah can you dive into that a little bit of like maybe even like how that influenced you to where you are now Honestly, I don't, my parents were just really, really, um, lax with me. My dad, especially he was never really into like formal educations right now. Like I don't really speak to my dad, but he's a hippie. Like he's a huge, huge hippie living somewhere in BC in the middle of a forest. And he was like, yeah, just, just draw, just do stuff. And my mom was kind of on the exact same page, but we were, we were poor. Like when we first moved from Ukraine, we moved to Scarborough and like my first TV was out of a dumpster. It was like one of those wooden black and white TVs. 
it was pretty pretty ghetto and yeah my mom just saw that there was an interest in me in drawing and she was like here you go graphing paper because I just went through so much of it wow my paper so at expensive. a young age you were just like yeah just giving her pe- like oh yeah colored pencils or regular pencils colored pencils okay colored pencils and pen a lot of pens because okay. I was doing things really fast not everything was like a fully rendered drawing you still use pens and stuff when you're yeah. yeah yeah I the right before I started tattooing I was using a lot of uh, micron pens because they're just regular pens and you kind of like do stippling with them and different kind of shading styles with that and it's pretty close like the closest medium to tattooing I guess mm-hmm. so I was doing a lot of that how do you even prepare for something like that to like get into your craft <laughs> like how did you come to the, making that decision like sure there's hundreds of people who yeah. like can draw and like like painting and doing that stuff but like the first instinct is to not be a tattooed art artist yeah because everybody tell like it's not a career that anybody sees as a viable one to actually make you money and get you places and mm-hmm. you don't really see the opportunities that are attached to it but it kind of bugs me that I can't really pinpoint it to a specific moment I remember having a conversation with a friend at one point and I can't for the life of me remember who it was and they're like you love tattoos because I had a lot of tattoos by at that point mm-hmm. and they're like you love to draw like why don't you pursue this and it was just one of those like crazy aha moments where I'm like how did I not think of this before mm-hmm. yeah what age do you think that 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 was literally right before I decided to do it oh, okay. so like, it's like I said I'm like extreme. I'm like you know what this sounds like a great <laughs> idea tomorrow I'm gonna quit everything and just dive into this has anybody like told you to your face that you're like a little bit too overboard when you're making those decisions and you're like well you're a little wild like slow slow down my mom had for a while she was like well I she's gonna hate me for saying this but she was a little bit cautious for a while as every mom would be she's like maybe you should go to school like do this do that and then she realized that like I had a passion for it and I had a drive and she's Mm -hmm. like you just you just need to do it like you have to do it and even now like I was telling you were we're moving next month. We're opening up a studio next month, doing all these things. Mm-hmm. And she's like, you are crazy. Like you are so extreme, but you, this is how I flourish. So yeah, you're obviously. putting it literally all on the table. Yeah. How do you determine like, if that's something that you're ready to pursue? Like if you weigh it out in your mind of like, okay, if I quit my job, like something that, cause I always start and stop stuff like printing t-shirts or something yeah. and doing all that stuff. But like, I was doing too much stuff to a point where I was like, okay, anything that I pick, yeah. I have to make sure I'm going to want to do it for the like next three years yeah. at least with no reward. Yeah. In that regard, is that something that you kind of think about or are you just like, this is where my head's at right now. I'm going all in. That's literally it. I don't have that thought process there. I mean, I probably <laughs> should because it's a little bit scary, but it's like one of those things like a dog walking in the park, like squirrel, run after it. That's yeah. basically me. If I find something that I'm super interested in, that's it. Mm-hmm. It's like you said, the, the blinders thing with horses. Yeah. That's, yeah, there's no other way around it. I don't really think of plans or anything. I'm just like, I'm going to do this. I mean, that's a blessing and a curse. Yeah. So, yeah. but so far it's been a blessing. So far it's been good. Can't um, complain. Something interesting that like looking into your backstory a little bit, like throughout this whole process, you've shared it. Yeah. Like literally every step of you um, selling prints and becoming an apprentice and like going all the way until right now. Yeah. Is that something that um, you like unconsciously did of just like, I'm just going to share it and like whatever. That was kind of the the thought process going like I didn't really think too much about it, but at the same time, I feel like a lot of people um, that I see and respect, they kind of have this like air of transparency through them. And it kind of just takes away that intimidating um, impossibility factor where you look at Mm -hmm. somebody and if they're completely transparent, they're like, okay, I'm going to show you how I got to point A from point A to point B Mm -hmm. and every step in between my failures, every little tiny thing, it makes it seem less impossible and I really respect that about people when they do that so I was kind of like now I'm just continuing doing it because of that because hopefully somebody can find inspiration in that and they're like wow this girl Mm -hmm. was serving in Fort McMurray and now she's doing whatever now she's queen of the world it's fine (laughs) (laughs) yeah but you do put yourself basically in a state that you're pretty much vulnerable all the time because Mm -hmm. people can praise you yeah but also like pick on you if they don't like something or if they're like no like there's no r- more room for women in this industry yeah. to get out I'd, like I'm not saying that's yeah. happened to you but like it is a dangerous line to be like 
posting and like letting everybody yeah. see your entire journey but the negative stuff just feeds you honestly like when people give you sure. the, those negative comments you're like you know what screw you like i'm gonna continue doing this i get that all the time from people mm -hmm. about everything from tattooing to how I raise my dog and stuff. Like people always want to say things to you, but I feel like the the better you get at things, the more of that commentary that you get mm -hmm. and you just, yeah, you just kind of have to deflect it. How do you tune it out? Like how do you not let it affect your everyday or like actually your work if somebody tells you like that's not how to raise a dog or that's like you're doing some style of art wrong? I joke about it. Honestly, I'm just, just the kind of person go. that just like turns it into humor. Like if somebody <laughs> tells me I'm not raising my dog correctly or something, I like post something and be like, this is me. I'm a horrible person. Like, here you go. And people are like, what the hell? I, that was supposed to offend her. She finds it funny. I turn everything into humor. <laughs> it makes things a lot easier, honestly, because you're going to get those kind of comments regardless. And mm -hmm. if you take them too personally, you're not going to get very far. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that's pretty fucking good. Yeah. Um, take me through your experience. Like, holding a tattoo gun for the very first time like do you think you were ready or do you think you were the first time i ever held a tattoo machine to tattoo because i started tattooing on uh cantaloupes mm -hmm. cantaloupes like, are the green ones right not the like fuzzy ones the melons i'm pretty sure they are cantaloupes have the there's green melons and then cantaloupes okay then it's the green melons okay. the green melons are what <laughs> okay. i started tattooing on in your apprenticeship yeah okay. and that wasn't really scary at all because it's a melon. Yeah, like it's it's, not if, you, if you screw up on it, it's whatever. But the first time that I ever held a tattoo machine and I actually tattooed on skin, I was attempting to tattoo a triangle on like the inside of my hip, which was, I on don't your, know. On your own skin. Yeah, it was <laughs> probably the dumbest idea ever because you're like tattooing in this super awkward position and I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So that was a complete failure. And then a couple days later, I was super duper hungover and I came in and when I'm hungover, I'm just like the most laid back person because on a day-to-day -day basis, That's I'm cool. super high strong and I'm like, I have a ton of energy. I was hungover. I'm like, I'm very, very calm today. I am going to tattoo and it's going to be wonderful. And then I tattooed my ankle and that anxiety just left and that was it. But you get a little anxiety every time you tattoo. Is that something that every artist does like tattoo themselves when they start? I don't think every artist does, but I feel like it's pretty important because then you kind of, you understand what it feels like. Like if you're going too deep yeah. or too light and then you could see the whole healing process, I think it's True. kind of a, an important rite of passage. Not everybody does it, mm -hmm. um, but I definitely think that people can benefit from that for sure. You literally have to learn from trial and error yeah. in that space. Yeah. And like just people telling you um, how it's done and watching people. Mm-hmm. It's terrifying at first too. Like the, my first, I don't know, 50 tattoos that I did, I was just like, oh my God. I'm looking back at them now, I'm like, wow, I'm so grateful that these people let me do that on them. You look at your lines, they're super shaky. Everything just looks very, very are new. You like, <laughs> are you asking people like close friends or relatives or something like for first victims? Or are you just well, letting when people I, walk in? I got really, really lucky, honestly. And I think it's because I had... I didn't have a huge following, but I had um, a little bit just from networking, like through different, um, through the industries that I worked in with serving, you meet so many people. And so I just put up a post and it was like $20 tattoos. Obviously they know that you're an apprentice. If you're mm -hmm. getting a tattoo for $20, it's not going to be a very good tattoo. You're kind of just practicing on people and they're like, all right, why not? Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of people that were interested in that. Um, my mom was actually one of them. My mom was probably oh, right like on. the fourth person I ever tattooed, which was pretty cool. But yeah, people are pretty trusting. Is that surprising to you? Very. I don't know if I would let just, well now because I'm covered in tattoos, it doesn't really matter. But I feel mm -hmm. like if I didn't have a lot of tattoos. As your first like, like tattoo, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I feel like looking back on your work, like your style of like when you're making um, just prints and stuff, mm -hmm. is, that, is that something you still do Not as a habit really. to, like what's your habits of, of like, um, keeping your hands like always moving. Is that something that you guys need to do to like not let it go stagnant and kind of keep always getting better? And we constantly, I don't really, honestly, it's, it's pretty bad, but I don't really draw that much anymore. Like just mm -hmm. on, on paper because every single day I'm tattooing and if I'm not tattooing, I'm drawing a design for the next day of the tattoo that I'm going to do. So, and I'm going home. Like it's just a cycle all mm -hmm. the time. Um, now pretty much the majority of the designs I would say 100% actually of the designs that I do are all on my iPad. 
And then you just yeah, take yeah. a photographic reference and you kind of just trip it out and add crazy backgrounds and change the contrasts and whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, you're doing it literally every day anyway. So yeah. you, it's not like you need practice time because yeah. it is your literally your full time. 100%. How long did it take you to get from like doing a couple tattoos to being like, okay, this is my full time job and now I'm like, can actually support myself? Um, I, so I left my apprenticeship early. I didn't complete my apprenticeship just cause I was getting weight. Like I wasn't learning anything and I got lucky cause my boyfriend is a really, really great tattoo artist. So he was teaching me pretty much everything that I know. So that probably, it really, really helped me quite a bit. Um, I would say probably four or five months in, I decided to get my own little space and just having that own space, I was getting people in every single day. So that was it. Wow. Yeah. So it was pretty fast. (laughs) It was very, very quick. And do you think that was like a word of mouth thing? Or do you think that was because you were sharing so much of that like transparency was showing of like, this girl looks cool to to work with. She also has really great work. And then like people just started like lining up. I guess that's probably it. Social media has been a really, really great tool for that. Mm -hmm. I remember in the beginning, like I would sponsor posts once in a while um, just to kind of push my stuff out there. I I use social media quite a bit to push my work out there. I think it's responsible for 90% of the clientele, maybe a little bit less because some of it is obviously word of mouth. But Mm -hmm. in the beginning, social media was a huge, huge factor in why people are coming in. How did you, like, did you choose a specific style when you were starting out or is it something that you developed like over time and it was just like hey this is the way I like to do things I think it definitely developed over time when I first started it was mostly just kind of line work things like kind of like the prints that I was selling everything Mm -hmm. was simple uh line work a lot of black and like some dot shading and then over time um it kind of deviated from that to the realism side and now I'm doing kind of abstract realism mixture just because it's so fun and so rewarding i can't do things that are just line work anymore i feel like i look at that and it just looks extremely incomplete to me Mm -hmm. okay i just want to get more and more complex with the designs over time plus you have to like keep finding ways to push yourself yeah exactly but i do think it's really amazing when you can actually look back through an artist's work and be like see the cohesion through all of their stuff and i think that's something um not a like not every single artist has but definitely like that is something that stands out and I think that's something that's really easy to see with you because you can be like oh okay everything has the same style and you can see the progression of like how everything happened and how it changed awesome I appreciate that it's nice kind of hearing that from an outside point of view that somebody (laughs) sees that like yes cool (laughs) what would you say to people that are like trying to find their own style and their own voice like whether it's um, actually in tattooing or in like another field? Honestly, you just have to experiment with things. You got to experiment with things, um, try different mediums. I've done, I I need to constantly keep doing new things, whether it's tattooing. I randomly just started, uh, doing videos last year. That was kind of, it kind of hasn't happened in a while, but you just kind of have to switch it up a little bit and find new interests. And then it's like shooting 10 bullets and one of them kind of hitting you know mm-hmm. and like finding about- like what sparks with you exactly something sticks eventually tattooing every day you must get tired of it no no <laughs> no. no oh my god not at all it's kind of funny because when my boyfriend and I are like yeah let's go on a vacation we're not going to tattoo like it's just going to be super chill we're going to do nothing that progresses us in our careers last last year the year before that we went to the Dominican for a week two days in we're like get us the hell out of here like we're <laughs> Where are iPads? Because we deliberately made sure not to bring iPads, not to bring pencils, not oh, to bring paper, nothing. You guys were serious. Yeah, we're like, we're, we're just going to relax. And two days into relaxing, we're like, this is way too much relaxation for me. We need to get back into it. You never get tired because every single tattoo is something different. I guess that's a little bit of a saving grace there because you're always having to do something different no matter. Like, it's the same medium, but it's always a different design. Exactly. Um, do you have trouble, like getting overworked or like having burnout in your industry? Yes, absolutely. Um, when we, when I first started, I was tattooing six, seven days a week and it just, it's hard to stay inspired when you're pushing yourself that much because Mm -hmm. it does become a job. Like you're still excited to go into work every day and to tattoo, but it's less, 
there's less excitement in it. Um, mm-hmm. I do get tired quite often. Like now we only work four day weeks um, and then we take three days off just to kind of get that inspiration back, get that energy back. And I think that's super important because I feel like a lot of people, not just in the tattoo industry, but everywhere else, they're kind of like, oh, you got to work every single day. You got to hustle, hustle, yeah, hustle. Is, hustle. <laughs> it's the wrong mentality to have. You need some downtime. It's yeah. so important. It just it re-inspires you and it reignites that flame. You miss whatever it is that you're doing, you know, in those couple of days that you have off and you need to kind of give yourself time to just do other shit. Yeah, I 100% agree. This like hustle craze that's going on right now is like, it's at a point now where it's just too gnarly. It's too much. Like, I don't sleep. Oh, you sleep six to eight hours. Oh, you, I sleep two hours. Like, why is that a cool thing? Yeah. You look like shit. You're (laughs) tired. Like, why is that a cool thing? You know? Um, Do you think only because you put yourself through that and like worked that much and had that many bookings is why you can look back and be like, okay, I do not need to work that much because it makes me feel like shit. Even though the output is great and Mm -hmm. there might even be more money there, I would rather have my sanity be able to be inspired and all that stuff. I definitely think so because you kind of see the, like you need to see that side in order to realize that the other side is better or that there's importance in relaxation mm-hmm. otherwise if you're just kind of working a steady schedule all the time you don't really realize it because you're kind of just complacent whereas if you work six seven days a week you're like wow it is actually important to take some time for myself what are some ways that you can clear your head and like be inspired if you're not feeling like making something new or i go for hikes every day like almost every day getting a almost dog every day. almost every day now getting a dog especially with having like such a high energy breed of dog Mm -hmm. um i have to go for a walk with him every day otherwise he'll probably go crazy and just like run amok you know Mm -hmm. so i go for hikes um like we were talking about earlier it's nice to have a car so i can just drive out of the city i find the city is great sometimes for inspiration but the majority of my inspiration comes from being outside of the city it's just too noisy here sometimes Mm -hmm. so it's nice to kind of just like leave it i can agree to that yeah for sure before you got to obviously you're at a good spot now Mm -hmm. um but were you sacrificing anything um big time you started yeah i sacrificed my social life pretty much entirely like i had a lot of um cut ties when i started tattooing because i was busy all the time and not everybody understands Mm -hmm. you go from like when i was apprenticing i'd still have time in the afternoon to hang out with people and whatever but when you're tattooing six seven days a week you don't want to fucking hang out with anybody. Mm -hmm. You just want to sit at home afterwards and just have like those two hours of just, you know, time to yourself. Yeah. And not everybody understands that. So I think my social life was a very, very big sacrifice in that period of time. Even now a little bit. Do you think it was important (laughs) though? Yeah. 100%. Because the people that kind of stuck it out through all that are the people that I'm going to have in my life forever. But the people that don't understand that are just people that don't understand you as a person and you know sometimes you have to say goodbye to that there's also that like process of like weeding out people that kind of just want to maybe just go out all the time but you're now that you have this path that you're focused on and people can't really see that Mm -hmm. they're like why aren't you hanging out and stuff but you're literally trying to better yourself by like only surrounding yourself with people that understand that mentality and like also want to like help you along your journey. Yeah. Nobody, the thing is like very few people really understand that. And some people say they understand it, but they don't. And Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the time when you're in the kind of uh, state that I'm in, a lot of people perceive that as like, you're just being an asshole. Like you're just, you think that you're like above everybody or whatever, when it's not that at all. You just, you want to succeed. Yeah. (laughs) I don't want to go out drinking anymore. Like that's not once in a while, my boyfriend and I will go out to like bar chef or something and just have Mm -hmm. a cocktail or two, but to go out the way that I used to and to do shit that's that irrelevant. It just, I don't know. I have like zero desire for it anymore. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. And I got it all out of my system at a very young age. So that's good. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I guess being a server. Yeah. Make your money and then spend your money in the same place that you made your money. Um, do you want to talk about the studio that you guys are opening? Yeah, absolutely. Like how did that opportunity come about? Oh man, we've been talking about it for a while and I've, I'm one of those people that I have actually never worked at a tattoo shop, like an actual tattoo shop. I've been pretty much in a private studio since I started. Um, So it was a pretty natural thing. And my boyfriend and I, before, we were super worried about working together because we're like, we spend all of our time together. Like, he's my best friend. We hang out all the time, whatever. Exactly. 
So that was kind of a very real um, hesitation that we had before. And then mm-hmm. last year we were traveling a lot for tattooing. We spent seven months, like not full seven months, but on and off uh, traveling. And we realized working together is a blast. So we're like, why mm-hmm. don't we just open up a private studio together and work out of it? So that's kind of, again, what we decided to do. And that was it. When I first started out, I was working just completely by myself and it just got so lonely and it's you, you don't have anybody to bounce ideas off of. Mm-hmm. And then the private studio that I work with work at now, um, Ben Ackerman, great guy, he he's there pretty much the entire time that I'm there. And it's just nice to have somebody to kind of gather inspiration off of and to like shoot the shit and to see what they think about the work that you're doing. It's just nice to For have sure. that extra body. But yeah, working by yourself is really boring. Mm-hmm. I feel like, have you ever been in a situation, because this has definitely happened to me, where you make some, like you finish... Uh, whatever you're doing and you're like is this actually good yeah and there's no one else to like kind of be like yeah that's good yeah. because you're just alone yeah like I want that validation yeah yeah exactly is that something that um has kind of been throughout like working alone for so long and making stuff by yourself like how, how do you get past like this might be shit but the next one will be better <laughs> I I don't know if I've really ever had it that bad. Like I'm a pretty huge perfectionist. Even the pieces that I'm not super duper excited about, I'm kind of like, you know what? Yeah, like this is this is it. This is complete, whatever. But um, a lot of the time I'll actually talk to my boyfriend about the tattoos that I'm doing and he'll be the same and we're, we'll kind of dissect them and see mm-hmm. what might need improving or what we could do next time that will, that will make it better. It's just terrifying to me. Like in my, like making videos, you can always go back for a revision. Tattooing, you're not you can't so much. do that. No, <laughs> like you really, really can't do it. If you fuck up, that's it. <laughs> like you're, it's a lot of on you. high pressure yeah. every day. Yeah, nonstop. Nonstop. Is that something that like weighed heavy on you starting out? Oh my God. It gave, it's still to this day, like anytime I go like, I'm doing a tattoo after this and I'm just like, oh. every <laughs> single, like you have that super excitement mixed with this like, mild anxiety but you wouldn't have it any other way right do you think the excitement came in like over once you got yeah um like doing it yeah Yeah. more and more and more and like the anxiety started to be like no it's okay exactly now it's more like you're just now I'm so competitive with myself I'm like yes this has to be like the best thing ever whereas in the beginning it is mostly just the anxiety you're like this is gonna be shit but how do I make it less shit Whereas now it's like you have way more pressure to do really good, but somehow the anxiety is a little bit, a little bit less. Mm -hmm. In doing what you do, like how do you keep pushing yourself? Um, By being consistent, I guess. Um, Even if you're not super, like even if I have days where I'm not feeling super motivated, I still try to sit down and come up with a design or something like that and hope that something sparks in my head. Um, yeah, pretty much do that all the time. But at the same Mm -hmm. time, you also can't force it on yourself. If you're not feeling inspired or creative or whatever, it's, it is nice to just take a day off to just do sweet fuck all. For sure. And I guess it's kind of nice to make your own schedule because I'm sure you definitely couldn't do that when you were starting out because it is like when you're starting out, it's a sprint. Yeah. The hustle that everybody, you need to give it your all when you are starting out and give a hundred percent. Yeah. And what you were saying of like, challenge yourself exactly because that is the only way that you can kind of get ahead in your career um and I guess it is kind of nice now having somebody else your boyfriend to like do you guys challenge each other as you're progressing oh my god nonstop. yeah him and I are like the same person when it comes to this we're both so (laughs) obsessed with our careers and we're both extreme extreme perfectionists and we're both ambitious to a fault where it's like, if you get into a situation where you're comfortable for longer than a month, it's just like, holy shit, what is the next move here? Like, we have to make big moves nonstop. Wow, so you like you both are seeking to be uncomfortable. Yeah, all the time. I think that would definitely be something that you, easily is pushing you both yeah. into like getting this new studio together. Obviously, that's something that's pushing exactly and it's funny because even now we're we're opening up the the new studio and we're like okay well that's cool so we have that all figured out the lease assigned whatever what's next, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> like 
oh my god we've we've had this uh this studio happening for like the last month we signed the lease maybe a month ago and now we're already like all right so this is a thing now this is happening and uh yeah we definitely have to start thinking like three steps ahead you know wow that's nuts how do you how do you deal with um being a perfectionist with a lot of anxiety (laughs) because you can't always sit and work on something like you have time constraints yeah like anybody else yep but um is there anything that kind of keeps you in check that's a that's again a really really tough one because Mm -hmm. i feel like with tattoos especially you get it to a point where you're i don't think i'm ever and i feel like the majority of awesome tattoo artists that i know can say the exact same thing i don't think you ever get anything to a point where you're like this is a hundred percent you always want to push it more and more and more and more it gets to a point that I guess you're a hundred percent for the day and then you're like, no, nope, I got to push it more. There's never, it's like, it's like me and girls, the limit does not exist. <laughs> Honestly, it just never stops. So you have to stop yourself. Yeah. 100%. Which is very hard. <laughs> Do you have any, um, morning or like, any time of the day, do you have like any daily routines or habits that you do that kind of set you up to get yourself going? Um, tea is very important. Yeah. <laughs> I drink a lot of tea throughout the day. That w- That's like a big thing. Uh, going for a walk or a hike or something. You, that's, do you drink coffee or no? No. Coffee just gets me really wired. Like over the so top wired. being like an excited person, just too shaky? Yeah. I, guess that's I can't. Something. I'm already like here, all the, like here all the time and that just gets me here and that's not a level that anybody wants to see. So right on. tea is, tea is kind of nice and nice and calming, you know? Um, but in terms of routine, um, on a good day, like I'll go to the gym. Uh, mm-hmm. that's a big one recently, just because we have the studio opening, we're moving, doing a bunch of things that like we have no routine right now whatsoever, True. but in a perfect world, get up, go to the gym, go to the studio and then just come home and read or watch Netflix or something like that. There's no like real super strict regimen that I follow. Did you guys have to set that whole thing up by yourself or did you, the the new studio? Yeah. Well, we had a, we have a realtor who found the studio for us because we were looking for like a very specific place. We wanted like a nice big loft and everything. And then we went in to see it and that was was actually the first place that we looked at, which was. Is it open right now? No, March 1st. March 1st, like somebody can walk in or appointment only? It's appointment only. So everything we want to do is private studio. Got Um, it. Just him and I both have our own clientele. We don't, we don't Mm -hmm. take walk-ins. We just, we just answer a bunch of emails and people come in with their appointments. Um, But yeah, hopefully March 1st, like we'll have the keys March 1st. March 7th is our actual first tattoos that we're having because we want to take a couple of days to like build some stuff Mm -hmm. and we're building like a mezzanine. Oh, cool. In there. So, yeah, we wow. still have some I can't even liver. imagine what that's going to look like. It's probably going to be sick. Yeah, you'll have to come by. That's amazing. Yeah. It's um, cool. Do you have like a lot of returning clientele? Yeah. A lot of people. And it's, it's kind of funny because some people will come in for something like super small, like one random piece on their arm or something. And they're like, I need to add something on top of that. And they're like, beside it. And all of a sudden, it just becomes a sleeve. When you were starting out, obviously, you don't charge $20 to tattoo anymore. <laughs> no. Um, how did you gauge where you were when you were progressively raising your prices um that was kind of an interesting one because it jumped like in the last two years obviously it jumped quite a bit Mm -hmm. um i find that when you raise your well the prices that i have right now are pretty much competitive with anybody else in toronto like you go into a studio my hourly is pretty much the same as everybody else Mm -hmm. when you raise your price you're also very inclined or at least in my experience to raise your level of work so if you raise your prices you automatically put yourself into a group with other people who are doing something at that level so you you better fucking be at that level or else you're overcharging people so unless I feel like I'm ready and I don't really know how you even figure that out it's kind of just you look at it one day and you're like you know what well it's the same as it's the same as literally any industry but Mm -hmm. there is a definite line when you hit a certain price bracket of like, okay, that's obviously just like some kid with a camera and that is like a Hollywood crew. Exactly. And I feel like in the tattooing industry, a lot of people kind of don't get that because we have this, like a lot of people in our industry have this starving artist mentality and they're like, Mm -hmm. no, like 
I just want to do tattoos just for the sake of it. Like I don't really have to right. charge a lot. And it's like, man, this is how you make a living. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sorry to say this, like maybe it's a shallow thing or something, but the price point 100% should reflect the level of work that you're doing. No, I agree. So if you're doing good work, why are you underselling yourself? People will pay and people are not going to think that you're you're being stingy with them or something like that or mm-hmm. you're being an asshole for overcharging. People are going to look at your work and be like, okay, you're charging X amount of dollars. This is why. So yeah. raising your prices isn't a bad thing. Yeah. It's no. weird because it's self like you are selling what you value yourself at. Yeah. And that's really fucking difficult. It's a weird thing <laughs> to do. It really, really is. And how do you even determine yourself if you're like, I'm ready to go to that next bracket? just seeing other I don't know I guess like you really shouldn't be comparing yourself to other people but in certain situations you kind of have to I guess Mm -hmm. and you again knowing what the market is kind of at for tattooing right now you need to figure out if you're below or above that and that's kind of like your baseline Mm -hmm. and yeah you just have to be honest with yourself like if you're doing shit tattoos you shouldn't be charging $300 an hour that's something that you should have the integrity to kind of decide on your own right but it is a very tricky thing to decide what price point you're at is the is it kind of like a big community like is everybody kind of friendly or is it like it's half and half um there are some assholes in our community just like there are in every other community but everybody knows each other it's very much like kindergarten sometimes Mm -hmm. um which can be good and bad true yeah (laughs) there's like dramas and stuff as anything else but there's also a lot of like camaraderie and people working with each other and doing collaborations and you know so it's I think it's funny too because you literally don't have to go to school for Mm -mm. something like this which is funny because now people are starting to realize that tattooing is a very lucrative lucrative um Mm -hmm. industry and they're trying to monetize off of it yeah there's like tattoo school now you don't need tattoo school you just need to have a little bit of an art. Well, you should 100% have an art background. Mm-hmm. Like at least have a passion for it. And then it. just practice. And then just practice. <laughs> That's it. Get an apprenticeship. Do it the proper way. Find some people that really that you idolize and would mm-hmm. really like to get your work to be on par with. And yeah, just do it. I'm not going to school. Like This is the one career field that you don't have to go to school to succeed. Yeah. You're wasting your time. To kind of wrap up, do you think that you could give any sort of advice for somebody entering um the same field would you tell them to follow kind of the same route that you followed of just not give a single fuck quit your job and go apprentice somewhere i think that's probably like the one piece of advice that i'd give obviously my route was not your common route like a lot of people they apprentice for like two years at a shop and I just kind of decided to say fuck it after Mm -hmm. a couple months of being at the studio that I was at went out on my own but I definitely would tell somebody that if you're 100% serious about it be 100% serious about it like there shouldn't be other things that are more important than this you know and there's a lot of people entering the industry that are kind of like oh like maybe I'll tattoo part-time to pay for my schooling like no you're putting work on somebody's body forever yeah. You need to be like 100% committed to this. This this should be your life. This is, it's so important, you know. How do you distinguish if, specifically for you, how do you distinguish if you're like 100% in something or you're not? It's just a gut feeling, honestly. It's a feeling? It's just a gut feeling. Yeah, like tattooing was one of those things where you kind of, and that's why I decided to drop everything. You're just like, this is it. There's nothing else that I would rather be doing. I think the the only job that I could think of that would be cooler than tattooing is maybe being an astronaut. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Respect, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, they go to outer space. That's pretty badass. <laughs> okay, um, where can people find you? Um, on the regular? Like online. Online, Sasha Maid. <laughs> and At Sasha Maid. Uh, on Instagram? Yeah, Instagram is probably the best thing. My website is uh, www.sashamade.com, but I mostly just update Instagram all the time. My website, I'm super behind on that. I think I haven't updated on it in like months <laughs> and march 1st march, no march 7th march 7th is uh, the uh, the grand opening of house of doberman the unofficial grand opening oh uh, full yeah. circle there that's cool yeah. well, that's a cool name yeah first <laughs> right on so how do people make appointments for that contact either one of you just email just send us emails our instagrams have that email option in them because they're business accounts mm-hmm. um if not it's sasha at sashamade.com super easy 
Cool. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> no worries. That's it for this episode. Um, I don't know if you're in the market for any tattoos or if you have any ideas, but if you do, I would encourage you to go jump over to Sasha's Instagram page and definitely look through it. Maybe you can even get a spot in the new studio. As always, thanks for listening. See you in the next episode. Thank you.